Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to the first GCN Racing News Show of 2021. Lots to get through today. Jeremy's going to be rounding up what was an intense period of cyclocross for the top stars, which I've enjoyed watching immensely whilst eating cake and being lazy. I also got a bunch of new 2021 World Tour team kits, and it looks like all the big name road riders are going to have to choose between the Tour de France, the Giro Rosa, or the Olympic Games this year. First up though, let's head over to Jeremy to talk us through all things cyclocross from the holiday period. Thank you, Dan. Happy New Year, everybody. The past couple of weeks, if you've been a cyclocross fan during the Christmas period, have been absolutely fantastic. We saw some of that great racing, that knockout, head-to-head -head battling that we love as fans of the sport of cyclocross, myself included. So today, though, we're not going to have enough time to do blow-by-blow -blow race reports like for every single race that we covered over the last 10 days. For that, you should go over to the Race Pass, which is inside the GCN app, and you can watch all of the great racing on demand isn't any time that you want. Of course, as always, territory restrictions do apply, but to talk about a couple of the highlights, the top women during the Christmas period was, of course, the queen right now, cyclocross Lucinda Braun of the Balawasa Trek. Yes, new name for that team, who won the World Cup in Dendermonda and the Super Prestige in Zolder. Now, the world champion, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado of Alpes and Fenix, would take two huge victories for her season against Braun in a head to head battle in the X2O Trophy in Harantals at an all new course and the GP Svenace in Ball. Denise Betsima of Palisals and Bingle would win the World Cup in Holst and the young elite Hungarian national champion, 19-year-old Blanca Vash of Alpha Motorhomes Proximus Dolcini would win two of the, what we'll call them smaller uh, Christmas period races, but they're televised Belgian cyclocross races, so they're huge. She'd win in Bredna and the other in Hullahem. Yes, the legend, Mariana Voss, also returned to cyclocross racing and won her first race in Essa. She's now riding for the Jumbo Visma team in the yellow and black, but anyway, she took her first victory of the season. Now, another rider that we have to mention on the women's side who tore it up over the Christmas block was the American national champion, Clara Hansinger of the Cannondale Cyclocross World.com program. She rode herself onto the podium again, following up her huge European performance at the World Cup in Namur. She rode to second place in Dendermonda. Now, speaking of Dendermonda, <laughs> Lucinda Brown won that round of the World Cup, but it was one of the most ridiculous Lee muddy events in recent history, but it turns out it was also one of the most viewed cyclocross races outside of the world championships in recent history. So most riders, well, they didn't like it. Well, a lot of them voiced their opinion in the press, but the fans, well, they loved it. And it's something to see. If you didn't see it, it was an absolute slog mud bath. And there were so many riders that were just broken souls after that race, mud up to their groins, not being able to get out. I even in the commentary called it the Loch Ness mud monster at one point. Anyways. On to the men. On the men's side at the top right now, well, there's not a lot of room outside of the world champion Matthew Vanderpoel of Alpes and Fenix. Let's just talk about what he won. Essa, Zolder, Bredna, Ball, GP Sven Nice, Hulahem, and just yesterday in Hulse. But probably more importantly than Matthew Vanderpoel and what he did win was what he didn't win against his arch nemesis and biggest rival, Wow, Van Art of Jumbo Visma. Now, Van Art won two races over the Christmas period that Vanderpoel didn't. Van Art won in his basically his hometown race in Hedrentals at an all new track that was part of the X2O Bod Commerce Trophy. And he also won that insane day in Dendermonde, almost by not one, not two, but three minutes over Matthew Vanderpoel in a straight up fair race, like no issues for either rider. Wow, Van Art was just. He was just stronger. And that was last week's news because just yesterday, Vanderpool got his revenge by winning the Holst World Cup round by over 90 seconds over Wout Van Aert and Tom Pidcock of Trinity Racing. Pidcock didn't win during the Christmas period, but he landed on the podium behind Vanderpool and Wout Van Aert at the four events that he faced off with them at as he leads up now to the World Championships. So a couple other riders who hit the podium during the Christmas period was Quentin Hermans of the Tormund CX, who got his first podium of the year as he battles back to his top form. He got second in Essa behind Matthew Vanderpool. Now Lars Vanderhaar of the Balawasa Trek team landed on the podium in Zolder for third place. Tone Arts of the Balawasa Trek team also ran third at the World Cup in 
Yeah, you guessed it, Dender Monda. And the Belgian, Jens Adams, got third in Hullahem after a return to competition after getting a bout of well, mononucleosis or something of that nature that kept him out of competition for quite some time. All right, so in other cyclocross news, Pro Tour roadie, yes, Fabio Aru, decided to get back to his cyclocross roots back down in Italy. The Sardinian finished fourth place at the Anconia Cross, which apparently rumors were that uh, Aru was going to be going to Alpes and Fenix to join up with Vanderpool, but he was going to be getting back to some cyclocross racing. Anyways, those rumors never panned out. He's going to Quebec at Assos in 2021. Nevertheless, cyclocross is on his program, and he's even slated to race the Italian championships for cyclocross on January 10th. Now, this past weekend was the World Cup in Holst, but there was also a huge C1 race in Switzerland in Hitnau, where Kevin Kuhn of Tormund CX won the men's race ahead of Team Enruc and Lars Forrester. And on the women's side, Christine Majeris of Team SD Works took the win ahead of Elisabeth Brontno of Germany and the Italian national champion Ava Lechnar, who rides for the Star Casino team. So after all of that racing that happened during the Christmas period, most riders are going to take some rest. Some will head south for warmer weather, like Tom Pitcock, who's going to the Ineos training camp down in the Canary Islands, from what I've been told. Um, Belgium, though, is going to have their national championships on the 10th of January, whereas all of the Dutch riders are going to have a longer rest period and a rebuild as well because of their cancellation of their national championships due to the coronavirus outbreak. So, cyclocross racing essentially is going to be taking a much needed down period before returning in late January before the World Championships. So our next race that we'll be covering here on GCN over on the Race Pass will be the Flandrian Cross in Hama on January 23rd. I look forward to seeing you all over there. That's all I've got for now. Back over to you, Dan. Thanks again, Jeremy. And yes, believe it or not, we have no live racing on Race Pass for the next three weeks or just under, as the cyclocross stars will now be taking themselves off to warmer climbs where possible to do a training camp leading up to the final part of the season, which, as Jeremy said, includes the World Championships, which will take place in Ostend in Belgium on the last weekend of this month. And that was supposed to be when the Water at San Juan concluded in Argentina. So that race was due to kick off the International Pro Cycling Road Race calendar, but looks now only to be for local teams. Yes, unfortunately, coronavirus, as we all know, is still affecting everything all over the world, and that includes bike racing as well. So, as things stand, it's likely that the first time we'll get to see the top male pro riders line up for a race will be at the three one-day races in Mallorca, which starts on the 28th of January. And that is where Tadej Pogacar, last year's Tour de France winner, will commence his season. The first World Tour event is provisionally, I guess, uh, the UAE Tour, which will be from the 21st to the 27th of February. And that is where Mathieu van der Poel will compete on the road for the first time this year which isn't much of a break after the cyclocross season, but given the form he's likely to have after the World Championship cyclocross race, hard to see anyone beating him up the Hatter Dam finish if it's included, isn't it? Uh, what that does mean though, is that we will not see him competing in the first Cobbled Classic of this year and the first European World Tour race of the season. That's the Omloop Het Newsblad. Uh, that will also mark one of the first major races on the women's UCI calendar, although it still hasn't quite gained World Tour status yet. So that series, the women's World Tour, in the absence of the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race, will begin with Strada Bianca, which is on March the 6th this year. And that is a race we're very proud to be bringing you live on Race Pass. Right, on to some new bikes and kits. Now, I'm not going to be going into too much detail right now because either next week or the week after, Cy Richardson and I will be using our well-known fashion sense and knowledge to deem all new World Tour kits either hot or not. However, just to get confirmation of our opinions, we'd like you to get involved too. Uh, so we'll be hosting polls on all the new kits over on our GCN app so that you can vote and we'll find out which kit is most unanimously hot and which is most unanimously not. Uh, before that extremely prestigious award is given out though, let's take a quick look at a couple of the kits that have been released over the holiday period. First up, quite a major change for Mitchton Scott, who will be known as Team Bike Exchange in 2021. Uh, gone is the familiar black and yellow, in is this mainly white jersey with the Bianchi Celeste green detailing on the sleeves and waist. I'm personally going to sit on the fence on this one for now. Uh, it doesn't immediately hit me as a stunning kit, and I fear it may get a little lost in the big peloton, but maybe it's a grower, we shall see. 
Uh, Israel startup nation have also changed things up slightly more subtly though. Chris Frew, their new star rider, is here modelling the kit. A white upper and a darker blue lower part of the jersey this year. Uh, and I think that looks quite classy, but again, I am going to reserve judgement, partly because I'm waiting for the big hot or not show, and partly because I haven't seen any riding shots just yet, which I think does change things somewhat. Uh, Bulls Dolmans was also due to have a fairly significant change this year, given that they've got a new title sponsor in the form of SD Works. So here is their new kit for 2021. Purple and red with black shorts. And I'm a fan of that one, uh, even if I don't think it would suit me, and I'm sure you'll all agree on that one. A couple of teams now who haven't made any major changes for this year. Uh, first up, Team Ineos, here with the new recruit Richie Port, fairly similar to last year, uh, and also Jumbo Visma. Uh, that kit is also not much of a departure from 2020, but there is one major change. This is Mariana Voss wearing it. Uh, she'll of course be spearheading their new Women's World Tour team, which is an exciting new development for 2021. Now another change for Jumbo Visma is their bike sponsor, which goes from Bianchi to Cervelo. Uh, here's their new bike, what do you reckon? Now I might surprise you here because you know my relationship with Cervelo. Did I tell you that I used to ride for the, the Cervelo test team? But I'm not a big fan of those yellow forks, they're just not quite doing it for me for some reason. Now moving on, believe it or not, there are still a couple of bits of transfer news to get through, even though we're already into the new year. Uh, new World Tour team Circus Wanty Gobert, who will now be known as Intermarche Wanty Gobert, have signed Taco van der Horn from Jumbo Visma and Ricardo Minali from Nippo Delco Provence, uh, whilst Edward Anderson is the latest young rider to step up from Hagen Berman's action. The 22-year-old has joined Alpes in Phoenix who, incidentally, have said that they will be competing at all three Grand Tours this year. So as winners of the UCI Europe Tour last year, that was their right, but they could also have opted to only ride one or two of them if they'd so wished. However, in confirming that they will take part in all three of them, it means that RCS and ASO will only have two wildcard spots available at the Giro d'Italia, the Tour de France and the Volta a España this year. And that's surely going to make competition amongst their home country pro teams even more intense than it normally would be. There's also been a bit of a stick in the spokes for the Tour de France and the Giro Rosa as it was announced that any athlete wanting to compete at the Tokyo 2021 Olympic Games will have to quarantine for two weeks prior to their competition. So, according to Velo News, that does not mean that they'll have to stay inside the confines of their hotel room for that period, but rather stay clear of all of the general public and within their own bubbles. However, what it does mean is that no rider wishing to compete at the Olympic road race, time trial or mountain bike event will be able to finish the Tour de France and only those wishing to miss the road race to complete solely at the time trial will be able to finish the Giro Rosa. And that is quite the conundrum really and it'll be interesting to see what the riders decide to do and if there's room for manoeuvre in the dates of those two major stage races. Uh, Mathieu van der Poel, who has long said that his ambition is to win Olympic gold in the cross-country mountain bike event, has already stated that he would choose that over the Tour de France if he had to pick one of the two. For other riders though, the decision could be far more difficult. So at the Olympics, you obviously compete for your nation. That means that the sponsors who pay your salary each year and each month are going to get little to no exposure. Whilst the Tour de France is the biggest event for exposure for the entire year, every year. Not a decision I want to make personally, although thankfully, of course, I don't have to. What would you choose? Let me know in the comments section down below. Right, that is all for the first racing news show of 2021. We'll be back, of course, next week, and I'll be back with Cy tomorrow for the first GCN show of the year, so make sure you join us then.